Hello and welcome to this episode of Discover Indie Parks. I'm Linda Broadfoot, your director of Indie Parks, and I'm here today with Andre Denman, principal parks planner and guru of all things Greenways. Welcome, Andre. Well, hi, nice to be here. Thanks so much. So we are here um, at the beautiful Monon Trail, which if there's anybody in Indianapolis that doesn't know about the Monon, well, I, I think we just can't help them because most people know about it. Um, tell us a little bit about the Monon specifically, and then we'll go into a little more deeper stuff on the Greenways. Okay. Uh, the Monon is 10.1 miles of trail from 10th Street all the way to 96th Street. Actually, it runs all the way now to Sheridan uh, with our friends in Hamilton County to the north. Uh, it's a 12 to 14 foot wide trail that's actually going to get repaved here coming up next year. And so we're pretty excited. It was one of our first trails that was not on the Kessler Park and Boulevard system. So you referenced the construction coming up on the Monon, which I think we can all admit is really needed and, and really an exciting development. Tell us a little bit more about what's going to happen and when. So the plan is to repave the entire 10.1 miles of the trail and actually widen it by two feet on each side uh, because of the number of users that we get on this trail. Uh, and since it has not had any up, uh, maintenance since it was originally built in the 90s uh, for the millions of users and the investment that the city made, um, we're thinking this is a good time to have it uh, improved. It's actually a federally funded project, so really not any money out of the city coffers. So uh, we're excited about it. Cool, cool. You said millions of users. How many people use just the Monon on a daily or annual basis? Uh, the last time we did trail counts in 2017, the Monon had about 1.1 million users uh, that went by the counters that we have. Uh, to put that in perspective, um, between 75th Street and 54th Street, had the most users of any trail in our system. The only thing close was the White River downtown, but that still, the Monon was twice as many users in that area compared to any of our other trails. That's amazing. So, you know, I think for those of us who've been around Indianapolis a long time and remember when the Monon was just sort of a, a you know, twinkle in Ray Irvin and other leaders' minds back in the day, I think, you know, maybe he and some other folks foresaw how successful it would be, but it wasn't a popular thing at the time, was it? Yeah, uh, there are many, as we would call them, NIMBYs, not in my backyard or not in my front yard, uh, that didn't want the trail. They thought it would bring crime, but actually it's done the complete opposite. It's been more eyes on the trail. It's increased property values. Uh, many of the apartments and developments that have come along the trail have changed their name to this on the Monon. Uh, the Monon is basically beachfront property. Everybody wants to be near it. They want to be on it. They want to be doing something on it. So, um, and the greatest thing I can say that has changed is all those tall fences have now gone down and everybody is putting steps or access because they want to walk right out of their backyard to the Mona. So I know you're an avid trail user, you're an avid fitness buff, cyclist, all that stuff. So why, why are trails so important to you? Uh, for me personally, um, when I was growing up, I spent a lot of time uh, on farms, outdoors, playing. Uh, and so when I went to school, I thought it was going to be the next Frank Lloyd Wright, but amazingly, uh, once I got there and took some classes, I realized parks were the thing that I did the most, playing sports, riding bikes, just having fun in parks. And so the other part of that, uh, when you talk about fitness, a couple of years ago, I actually had a bad report from my doctor. And so the parks and trails, I'm telling people that, you know, parks and trails advocate health. And here I am, uh, overweight, uh, high blood pressure, uh, almost uh, diabetic. And so I decided just to use the things that I've been helping build. So. I pretty much ride a trail you know, for 30 minutes a day anywhere in the city or even out of the county for exercise and that has helped me go from 360 pounds down to like 270. So um, awesome. got my weight down, got my blood pressure down, no longer on the diabetic medication, had to change my healthy eating habits, no more Long's Donuts as much, so sorry Long's. Uh, but, <laughs> but the trails and the parks and using them for what I needed them actually saved my life. So. That's amazing. That's amazing. Health and wellness is one of the primary components of our mission and you're helping make that happen and you're living it yourself. So thank you. Is there anything else about the Monon specifically before we, you know, go, go for a ride? Um, anything about the Monon specifically you want people to know? Uh, the great thing about the Monon is it connects to many of our trails. So not just the Monon, it connects to the Fall, uh, Fall Creek Trail, also connects to the Canal, to Canal Path, uh, which will get you down the riverside and Marion College and Butler. Uh, and so the Monon, while it's the hub and everybody uses it, the great thing about the Monon is it connects to so many other trails that people can access and get around the city. So t don't just think about the Monon, but you can get to where you want to go from the Monon. 
Talk a little bit about, um, you know, the red lines coming, and, and in my mind, in a lot of ways, I just consider it being a parallel to the Monon. So how do you think transit and, and trails can intersect? Uh, the great thing working with our partners in DPW is DPW is looking at the areas where we do not have connections from the Monon to the Red Line. And so they're making those improvements because, again, we have the trail counts. We know that we have users that actually use this trail that come from Hamilton County to ride all the way downtown. So the Monon and other trails will be uh, other key points of uh, access to the Red Line uh, so that people might not need to use their cars anymore. They can just jump on the trail get to the red line, go to work, go to wherever they need to go, and then get back on the train. So the great thing about the greenways um, throughout the city is they're not just a place to bike and walk, but they also connect to parks and other amenities. I mean, we're standing here at the White River. You know, a lot of people are paying attention to the river right now. And there's something neat about right where we are. We're outside the art center, um, but this is technically a park amenity right here. Tell us what's going on here. So years ago, we worked with the art center and the public to gain access, better access to the water. And so we put in uh, a canoe launch access for small watercraft uh, to be able to get in. Also, it doubles as emergency access when somebody is not paying attention and goes over a couple of dams, which seems to happen once a year. Uh, but we have uh, amenities like this along our greenways and in our parks. So Fall Creek, we have uh, two, canoe, two canoe launches there. Uh, we're looking to put some other ones near White River, near downtown, uh, and also with the Riverside Park Master Plan. So. Um, don't just think about greenways as bike, biking and, and pedestrian, but also access to our waterways. So just wanted to make sure we got, uh, let the public know about these. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So from here, we're gonna go up to the bridge and talk a little bit more about greenways in general. So we're out here on a weekday morning and it's even busy out here on the Monon today, you know, during the week. So how do users navigate sort of trail etiquette? You know, we're trying to stay out of people's way certainly today. How do you, how do you sort of pass? What are all those rules of the trail? So we ask all of our users, whether they're on the bike, whether they're with their dog, uh, just to be courteous and remember, uh, as we've said before, there's so many users. You want to uh, watch out for people trying to pass you. So if you're passing, uh, you want to announce your passing on the right, on the left. Uh, it would be great if you had a bell on your bike so that you could announce it as that, uh, that way as well. Uh, if you have a dog on a leash, try to kind of keep the dog close to you so that you're not causing any tripping uh, for any users. Um, and uh, as a runner, I know many people like to bike or ride with their earbuds or earphones in. Kind of turn your music down just a little bit so you can also hear people around you. Uh, just be courteous as you're coming up to stop signs or crossings. Don't try to blow through them because uh, uh, cars may not see you. Uh, and so just think about things from another person's vantage point. So trails, unlike parks, so parks are dawn to dusk, right, as a general rule. We generally don't have or encourage users to be in parks after dark, but trails are a little different. Talk about that. So the greenways are actually uh, um, open 24 hours. And so with that, there's actually a law that asks you to or requires you to have lights on the front and back of your bike. And so if you're going to bike on our trails after hours, it be for safety reasons to have those lights on your bike or on a helmet so that you can one, see where you're going and uh, if there's an issue, people can find you as well. Excellent, so the Monon is the oldest and the most well-known, but there's so many more. Tell us, you know, how many miles of trails are there? Tell us a little bit more about some of the other great trails in the city. So all together in our whole system with greenways and multi-use paths, which I'll go into the difference, not really a big difference. Uh, we got about 101 miles of trail uh, and have about 10 miles coming in 2020. Talk a little bit about Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and, and how they can earn patches. So as part of the Indy Greenways uh, partnership as well, we looked at ways to uh, get our younger uh, residents involved, uh, but also a uh, way for it to become service. So uh, through this patch program, um, there was some education. So we talked about some of the things on the trail, whether it be uh, environmental or just history of things on the trail and then actually gave them an opportunity to do a service project, whether that could be helping with cleanup, with graffiti removal, or planting some trees. And so uh, I believe you were involved with the, the first uh, project with the Girl Scout troop that was very exciting. And uh, now that patch will be available for uh, troops. So as we close out the show today, talking about greenways, um, I wanna make sure we're highlighting even more safety. We talked about some safety tips already but I think it's really important. You'll notice every time Andre and I are on a bike, we're wearing our helmets. Andre, what's on your helmet? A uh, Longhorn sticker. I'm born in <laughs> Texas, but I grew up in Indy, East Side, Warren Central, Ball State grad, but got the best of both worlds, Indiana and Texas. 
but we uh, we would feel remiss if we didn't stress to every bicyclist in the city whether you're mountain biking trail biking riding around the neighborhood wear your helmet I personally had an incident in my family. My husband was on a bike ride recently, and I have no doubt that the accident would have turned out a lot differently had he not been wearing his helmet. So please, I can't stress enough, don't get on your bike without strapping on a helmet. Um, and with that, I thank you, Andre. Thanks for talking about Greenways. Andre has been a tremendous advocate um, for Greenways in the city for a long time. So we're excited to see the system grow and see more and more users. Um, and with that, I'll encourage folks to ride, walk, run, take their dogs, you know, check out some greenways you haven't seen before. And remember, every day is a great day in a park. Thanks so much.